Hi guys and welcome back to Chelsea Queens of You. My name is Michelle. And my name is Nina. Welcome back to Carefree Queens, guys. I hope everyone is having a good day. Carefree Queens is back. The Premier League is back. Chelsea are back. And it is finally an exciting time to be a Chelsea fan, Michelle, because, I mean, with everything that's gone on in the transfer window, how we have played our cards, you can only just admire it. And we've pissed every single Premier League club off. So it's happy days. It's happy I days. Love it. I absolutely love it. I was actually naively hoping for a win, which I think we could have managed. I think we could have managed to score more. Mm. We were the better team. I agree come with you. Come on. Come on. That was just such a massive contrast to what we were used to watching last season. Mm. I loved it. I loved it. No, it was great. But, you know, a point in your opening fixture against Liverpool will take it, considering how dry and terrible the last draws against Liverpool were, you know, last season. A lot of positives to take, a lot of players that impressed, a lot of debuts, uh, a debut goal for, of course, De Sassi as well, our new centre-back. And honestly, we just looked so much more alive. We looked a lot more energetic. Pochettino set up well, and it seemed that we actually, for the first time in forever, had a game plan as well so you know Michelle we sat here on Carefree Queens countless times last season talking about how clueless both our managers were and finally it seems like we've got someone that has a clue don't we absolutely uh we we have very little to complain about now which is so strange like very little to we're complain. finally carefree Michelle we got <laughs> uh no but it's I love I know I already said this, but I genuinely love it. I love to see that we finally have put the responsibility into someone's hands who actually gets it. And not just mm. clueless, hopeful, oh, he could be great. Yeah, but I mean, this isn't the stock market. You kind of need to be sure in some areas. And I, I'm, I'm just very pleased. And I'm very pleased with his attitude as well. I love the technical stuff. I love the football IQ. But I just love how invested Pudge is. Like, he has a personality. He's not just dry sitting there after a conference, after the game, saying, oh, the boys gave it all. And clearly the boys did not give zero, like, they didn't give any Fs. So it's just really refreshing to see that there's finally something, there's finally someone in charge of us again mm. who was passionate about it and is not afraid to show personality yeah, yeah. no i, think I agree with you i agree it. with you you've got it spot on with the, the manager manager's attitudes um but yes let's address the massive talking points this week our pursuit for the last three months, maybe even six if you want to count January's transfer window as well, is finally realised it's ours. We've got the here we go on Moises Caicedo after getting the scare that he's going to Liverpool. Nah, it was Chelsea all along. <laughs> and not even two days after, we've also signed Romeo Lavia. And what more could you ask for? The players that Liverpool have literally been after for two months, we signed in literally a week less than a week and yes let's talk about massive clubs and let's talk about you know player pool because clearly players are choosing Chelsea you know over other respective clubs in the Prem and you know it does boost your confidence and it makes you feel hopeful that our club is clearly going in a direction which appeals to players as well players that are literally just coming up into their careers you know 20 one-year-olds, 19-year-olds, because Lavi is 19. He's so young and raw. And he is one of the most demanded, you know, uh, midfielders in the Prem, as is Caicedo. And we've managed to get them both. So it's absolutely happy days. And we're not even going to complain about the fee right now, because I feel like, yes, it's expensive, but I feel like we're paying for the potential as well. And, you know, we saw Liverpool interested, Arsenal interested. I'm sure Man City showed interest in Caicedo at some point. Man United did as well, but they chose Mason Mount. Thanks, Man United. <laughs> and, you know, I think we need to give a shout out to Manchester United, actually, for helping us in this pursuit. Thanks for giving us the money for Mount. And thanks for dropping in Caicedo so we can get him <laughs> sorry it's gonna be a lot of shots fired no, and love it. if you're upset about it, it. <laughs> so 
but yeah, no, Michelle, we deserve it because they were laughing at us last season. And now we can actually start laughing and we will be laughing. Let's get into the season. But, you know, West Ham couldn't come sooner, Michelle. We've got West Ham away on the Sunday. I personally see and expect three points in that game. I don't know about you. No, absolutely. Absolutely. I feel like I've taken a massive turn from last season and I'm going to be the biggest optimist you'll ever speak to until it's going to go drastically downhill, which I really don't hope it will. But yeah, no, I was hoping for three points on the opening game. I am expecting three points at West Ham away. Um, but I don't know. I feel like it will come down to the lineup. And I, I will mm. say that I was actually disappointed with not seeing Mudrik in the lineup, especially mm. he only had 10 minutes. And Again. He, made it, he, he made it worth it. I just, I genuinely hope someone's sooner than later is going to realize that he has so much potential and is going to provide so much for us, especially with Jackson, especially with, I just, how, how's no one seeing it? How is no one see? Well, I feel like people are seeing it, but it's just, why are they not acting on it? Act mm. on it and and provide to the confidence he gained during the preseason. It's just... So yeah, I was, no, I agree with you. I feel like Pochettino's giving Sterling a chance because he knows that Sterling has still got a lot to prove at Chelsea. He's still got a lot, a lot to prove. And I'm not going to talk about Sterling for ages because I've spoken about him enough. And I feel like he's almost kind of like a habit talking point right now in terms of our attitude towards him. But I feel like Pochettino is trying to flesh out anything he can from Sterling. He came with an expensive price tag. He's one of our more experienced players and he <coughs> actually wants to give him a chance there. But I said this, he is prohibiting, like you just said, Mudrick's development in that role as well, because I think Mudrick has also proved he deserves to start. So you do have yourself that debate there. But I feel like because of a senior perspective, which Sterling is over Mudrick, you know, Mudrick is classified as a, a kind of more raw um, player there. Sterling, a more experienced kind of finished role there, even though he hasn't lived up to it. I feel like, however, watching that game against Liverpool, yes, he wasn't the worst player. It wasn't his worst performance. But I do feel like Pochettino should take that and bench him and perhaps Absolutely. start Mudrick in that role. Because at the end of the day, We've got these players to compete now for these roles. Mudrick is going to be competing up against, you know, Sterling. And Sterling, if he wants to keep his role in that starting eleven, he's also going to have to put a lot more work in, put a shift in. But, Michelle, I am manifesting a front three of because now Madweke is actually fit as well. We saw he was a sub. He did warm up on the sign line there. I was low-key hoping that maybe he'll make an appearance, but obviously we're not rushing him in yet. I don't know if he starts, but I think he might be brought in on um, Sunday, which would be so exciting. And, you know, me and you being Madweke and Mudrick's biggest advocates last <laughs> season, I think we'd be the absolute happiest. And with Jackson up top, I honestly think that is an absolutely electric front three there. No, absolutely. Them three would be, it would be lethal. I just, mm. I'll just quickly jump back to your starting point because he might be older and you'd expect him to have more experience with, his age but I don't think he's bringing that to the field I I don't mm. see it and I especially did not see it during the Liverpool game I don't remember the last game he actually did bring anything do you know what I mean like I feel mm. like he, he he should be somewhere else considering his experience and I I get that you know it might be because it's not suitable for him the way we play football etc City was very suitable for him, but I, I would have dropped him immediately. I would have taken him off during the halftime, and I would have, especially because we have such a young team anyways. It's not going to make the biggest difference if you're going to put in Mudrik. Well, yeah, it is going to be a, a massive difference, but it's just you're not going to lose experience. I feel like you're not going to lose experience because you still have – characters like Thiago and it's, it's genuinely baffling to me that that he's gonna he's getting such a long leash in a way mm. like 
bench him. Honestly, I, I would have benched him. Pudge bench him. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It gives the player reflection time as well. It's almost like kind of in school when you get told off to, you know, have a think about everything you've done. And it's not necessarily because he's had the worst performance against Liverpool. It's more of a, a point of view that Pochettino is here to try, obviously, our younger players out now and try this younger team working. And we kept saying this, Mudrick only gets better by playing. He only gets better by starting as well, because like you said, a player can't get involved in the last 10 minutes of a game, you know, especially if you're chasing um, to protect a lead or you're chasing to get an equaliser as well. It's so difficult for a player that raw and that young to get involved immediately and make an impact for 10 minutes. You know, what is 10 minutes? It's really nothing. And, you know, we complained that Potter and Frank did uh, much of that to them, um, you know, the likes of Medwake and Mudrick. And it would just be nice to see Mudrick get starts and to see how he does. And, you know, of course, it's great to have rotation there and uh, rotate the two. But I truly think that Mudrick is so much more deserving than 10 points at 10 points, 10 minutes. And he has proved it. But anyway, Michelle, moving away from our attacking um, players, I wanted to talk a little bit about, obviously, our debutant, um, Axel de Sassi, um, our new centre-back, which we brought in, because, of course, we know Wesley Fofana is going to be out and injured for quite an extensive period of the Premier League this season. So he's repping the number two, the iconic Rudiger number, and he really, I think, struggle to settle into that game. I think he was a little bit at fault for um, Luis Diaz's goal as well in the first half. But, you know, you can expect the player to be shaky. You know, he's just been thrown into this team. It's never easy to start your first game against Liverpool as well, opening Premier League fixture. But then I think he did grow into the game and he had a very um, good time at kind of intercepting, pushing up further as well. And then he obviously got his goal as well. And honestly, it just does warm your heart to see the way he celebrated it as well honestly like what more could you ask for from your players to have that desire that passion and from a you know a fan as well sitting in the um the home end it just it really is everything you want to see from your players especially because we barely had goals let alone celebrations last season so I think he's off to a really good start and only time will tell but to have um that player there as well that's already shown passion seems to have the ability as well we clearly do have depth there in our center backs as well in our defense so how does that make you feel in terms of uh confidence levels for our defense this season um I, I I don't know to be honest. Um, I'll just say in general, it seems a lot better to me. There are still a few things here and there, but it's just what gives me hope and what makes me very hopeful is that people on the pitch, people, the players, I call them people too. They are people at the end of the day. <laughs> people on the pitch, um, they look a lot more willing to put in a shift mm. which is going to make a massive difference even though you might not be the oldest player the most experienced player it's just, it's the fact that you're willing to work for it it's the fact that you're willing to work for your for your teammates and that alone makes me really hopeful and what better teacher than Thiago Silva honestly it's just oh yeah for real like it's, I I am not concerned I'm genuinely not concerned. Anyone who's going to be in his care is going to... They, there's no other opportunity than for them to blossom. Mm, no, I agree with you. And on your point about Thiago Silva is absolutely bang on because I think we saw Badia Shil settle in to, um, you know, Chelsea football, Premier League football because of Thiago Silva, that little partnership uh, there. Yes, of course, French speaking equally with Wesley Fofana. I feel like he is just such a, he is almost that guru there that settles players in, eases them in. He's like a teacher there. And not only is he a phenomenal um, centre-back himself and his footballing abilities are just almost getting better, even though he's ageing, you know, he's still up there absolutely great and he's helping these younger centre-backs integrate themselves as well because he's almost like 
teaching them how to be him because I know one day that dreaded day where Thiago Silva parts of Chelsea comes he's almost leaving these trusted younger centre-backs that are going to be a lot better and are going to be up there you know following into his footsteps uh, to take Chelsea's defence into future success and I honestly just can't help but admire Thiago Silva in every sense I think already he is a Chelsea legend nobody could tell me otherwise nobody can really fight this case I feel like us Chelsea fans are very divided in our opinions in terms of players across the pitch. Thiago Silva is just that one player that doesn't divide opinion. You know, everyone unanimously agrees that he's an absolute legend of a Chelsea player. And, you know, big up Thiago Silva because he just continues to impress. People are saying, oh, you know, he's coming towards the end of, uh, you know, his uh, best years and he's going to get work. No, you know, Thiago Silva is absolutely smashing it. And I think he's, you know, one of the best centre-backs in the Prem. That's it, period. No, there's, there's nothing to argue about. Like, there's mm. absolutely nothing to argue about. He's just so calm and collected. Mm. And he knows what he's doing. And now he makes football beautiful to watch. Yeah. And even though, I think, I don't think it was last season, but maybe even the season before that, he saved our asses so many times in situations where goalies were just set like they could do absolutely nothing and then you just see this guy come running out of nowhere and then just he's at, like i i will never get tired of talking about him never mm. and he is oh this is probably very controversial to say but i'd argue oh uh, shoot can i say this i'd argue that he's better than ronaldo i realized that they're not Playing the same as Thiago Silva's better than Ronaldo. <laughs> but age wise, they're similar. And he's still playing in the best league in the world. Mm. Oh, sh maybe I shouldn't have said that. Maybe I really <laughs> it's That's getting so clear. Do you know? I say it all like, oh, shoot, I can see the TikToks already. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> do, do you understand it. my point? Do you understand yeah. my point? It's just. He's just I that think good. To, <laughs> I, think, I think what I'm trying to say is that he's just, I'd argue he's still on top of his game. He's oh, just yeah. phenomenal. And it's just, I'm not trying to demolish, demolish Ronaldo in any way because I very much admire him and I admire the way he has always been working his ass off. But come on, Tio Silva, like I can't even, I'm going to stop now. I'm stop now. Before I get to okay. right, we've talked about our forwards, we've talked about our defenders. Let's talk about midfield because yeah. it almost feels like we've now it's not a complete revamp in terms of squad wise because we know that that goalkeeping position there is a little bit iffy. Of course, Kepa left um, to go on loan to Real Madrid and Sanchez was brought in before that, but in terms of it was, I think it was always an idea that they would rotate and they would. Right. like fight for that number one uh, goalkeeping position throughout the year but now it seems like Sanchez is our number one and I don't quite think that that is a solid keeper in terms of yes you know we can absolutely be title contenders with Sanchez in goal I don't know I could be wrong in a few years time he could be one of the best goalkeepers in the Prem I don't know but in terms of right now it does give me a little bit of anxiety, but I'm confident because we've got a good defensive strong line and, you know, we can't judge him just yet. He did okay. I think he was a little bit shaky, a little bit nervous, but, you know, you just get thrown straight into Chelsea-Liverpool game, opening fixture after you've barely played, you know, for Brighton. So a little bit worrying there. But in terms of our midfield revamp, I think nobody expected that we would get it done as quickly as we have, you know, literally kickstart the transfer window, Kovacic, Mount, um, Kante literally left through the door. And we were kind of like, well, you know, we're stuck with Gallagher, Loftus-Cheek before he got sold and Enzo, you know, what, what are we doing? And now we're looking at, you know, we've got Caicedo, we've got Lavia, we've got Enzo, we've got Carney, we've got Santos. We've got these players that are here for... Years and years and years and years, you're looking at the future of Premier League midfielders and we've got them. We've literally got them. So it's honestly so exciting to see that we have addressed so much in such little space of time. And 
how can you not be confident? Because we said, yeah, a lot of our goal scoring problems come because we don't have midfielders. You know, we're, we've got loose strings across the pitch. We can't really feed defence into midfield, into um, attack. Now we can, because now we've got a lot more there. We've got smoother transitions and I'm just so excited. You know, like I said, West Ham couldn't come sooner. I'll be there. I'll be there. And I'm so excited. <laughs> Um, should we maybe just quickly touch upon Nkunku? Okay, go on then. I just think it's, I think it's very typical. But you know what? If Nkunku was fit, we'd be absolutely different levels right now. We'd be bashing three points. I don't even care every single game, game in, game out. Do you know what? Um, I think, let me quickly just interrupt you on that point. I think Premier League clubs are actually low-key really happy that Nkunku's injured now because otherwise we would have been way too threatening. Uh, No, this kind of reminds me. We literally, before we started to film, watched Australia versus England. Oh, yeah, of course. Big up to England, by the way. Yeah, what the hell? In the final. And Australia managed to equalise. And I'm just nervous because I've put a bet on England. Nina texts me, yeah, no no worries, Michelle. Um, We got this. They just need to swap up Sam Kirk. And I was like... (laughs) If only. I feel like it's the same thing with Nkunku. Like, people are low-key happy that he's out of play for a minute, but he's going to mm. be back. And he's going to... Last thing, last thing, because th- I actually wanted to talk about this. How good was Kaiseido's announcement video? Was it yeah. his mom or, or, like, the... Oh, it's that was his mom. His mom, okay. Well, I love it. That's, that's the thing I want to see. I want to see people who've, who have admired the club for ages and then they mm. make their dreams come true because then our dreams are coming true because they bleed blue we bleed blue and then we have a purpose together rather than them just getting a paycheck and then going off absolutely. to the league and whatever. there you are no you're absolutely yeah. right and he said that he has been the chelsea fan and you know it has been a dream of his to play for chelsea and like you said what more could you ask for from you know incoming players they don't necessarily need to prove that they want to be here i mean yes of course it's easy on words but you know then you've got you've got that photo there and you've got the desire there and it's easy to see when a human being is actually eager to you know do something make something happen yes it is football at the end of the day but you know there, there's fans in the footballing world you know there's loyalties there's these there's love for a club and when it comes to it you can't hide it it's almost like a lot of players dream to play for you know Real Madrid or Barcelona and you know when Real Madrid comes calling yeah of course you're shooting off and it's mm-hmm. like we've got that pool as well it seems you know we've got that pool where players are thinking yeah we want to come to Chelsea because they've seen us lift trophies in the past 20 years and it's all I've ever known as well you know I'm 22 I've grown up literally watching Chelsea lift trophies year after year after year and it's just so great to see these players come smiling and wanting to play for Chelsea Football Club we're just massive I think that's a freaking we great are. way to... <laughs> I think it's a great way Michelle to round out this video you know we're Absolutely. massive three points on Sunday guys is coming obviously let us know down in the comments what your expectations are for this season it's been a very positive video and it's just nice to actually have good things to say about Chelsea, promising future ahead. And, you know, I said this on my fan cam as well. We were told to trust the process last season. Trust the process this season. This is it. This season is it. (laughs) Um, Do not forget. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. Like Nina said, leave a comment down below. Like the video if you like our show and make sure to check out Nina and my personal social media as well and we'll see you in the next one thanks guys